All right, welcome back AP Calc AB students. We are going to take a look at just a couple of really short multiple choice questions that utilize our PVA, position, velocity, and acceleration concepts, along with a bit of integration. So let's take a look. These are very uh, akin to what may be encountered on the advanced placement exam. So choose the expression you would use to solve each problem. A particle moves in a straight line with velocity v of t meters per second, where t is time in seconds. At t equal 5, the particle's distance from the starting point was 6 meters. What is the total distance the particle has traveled between time 5 and 10 seconds? Well, obviously, we want to make sure that we isolate in on the question. And we can see that we're looking for what is the total distance the particle travels along those time intervals. So we have to start thinking distance traveled, total distance. Well, we don't want to just integrate, say, the velocity, because we talked about how if we just integrate the velocity, we're just going to get the displacement, or maybe where the particle's position might be. And that's exactly what uh, is going on in part B. And we don't want to choose part B as the correct answer because this will address basically where the particle is at time 10. Now, If we continue to look through the answer choices, really we only see one option that would really make sense for us. Total distance has to be an integration of absolute value of velocity. And so we're going to go with option C. Now, if you want to look at some other possibilities, like perhaps what is the meaning of D? Well, D tells us some things about the particle, but it's certainly not its total distance traveled. D is going to tell us basically the particle's displacement between t equal 5 and t equal 10. Now, could that possibly be the particle's distance traveled? There is a chance that it could be. But because we don't know anything specific about the function v of t, then we don't want to choose d. If v is always positive, then d and c are going to have the same answer. Now, choice a is a little peculiar. I, I don't even know really how to interpret this so much as except to say it's the particle's velocity at time 5 added to 6, which obviously is not anything close to what we were trying to find. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's take a look at the second multiple choice question. Move myself out of the way. Take a look at the question up here. It says a particle moves in a straight line with velocity v of t equal t squared minus 3t minus 7 meters per second, where t is in time in seconds. At time t equal 2, the particle's distance from the starting point was 10 meters in the positive direction. What is the particle's displacement between time 2 and time 9? Now, this one's a bit tricky. If you look through the choices, perhaps your eyes are drawn to maybe choice C, where we have the absolute values, but we are not going to opt for this answer because this would be the total distance once again. And I'll refrain from saying from time t equal 2 to 9 because I think that's pretty obvious. Now, it's possible that choice A brings about a little bit of attention. After all, choice A does utilize that 10 meter position. And then we just add this other sort of accumulation of, of displacement, of position. But this is not going to be what we want because this is just going to give us the position, the particle's position 
at time 9, or its displacement from the very beginning of the problem, time 0, let's say, maybe that's when we started, to time 9. If we want the particle's displacement only between time 2 and time 9, then we're going to be going for B here. And hopefully that makes sense. If you had to establish some connotation for D, I would only be able to tell you that it would be, I guess, the total distance the particle travels from time 2 to time 9 plus 9 more seconds, or 9 more um, meters in this case, which really doesn't make a lot of sense, I think, overall. So hopefully those two multiple choice questions get you a little bit more comfort with learning the difference between distance traveled and displacement, as you're going to see quite a few of those coming up. And again, I cannot emphasize enough that you take a look at the wonderful calculus Bible. What I mean by that is a few pages back in the notes, you recall this particular page, which is so valuable, such a wonderful go-to place to really get uh, a lot of the language worked out as you work through some of these problems. So please take a look at that page every single day that you're studying Unit 8, and it'll make a big difference. Hope this helps. We'll see you next time.